I put up a poll asking if people wanted to know about their honing the power of your menstrual cycle or everything you need to know about your vagina. But it was 50-50 the last time I checked, so I just thought I'd do both of the videos. As you all know, we live in a patriarchy and the world is based off a circadian rhythm, which is a 24-hour cycle. The only sex that works off of a circadian rhythm is the male. We should be working off of our menstrual cycle, so because of our home hormones, progesterone, half of the month we need more sleep, so we might need to sleep in a bit later. Or one week of the month, we might be 10 times more productive than the last week of the month. And so you might feel like at some stages of the week, you just want to stay in bed, you don't want to see people, you might want to work from home, whereas the circadian rhythm 9 to 5 schedule doesn't allow us to work like that. So we might be seen as lazy or unproductive at certain points of the month, even though we could be 10 times more productive than our male counterparts at certain times of the month. This is our loose guide, how you can make your menstrual cycle advantageous, how you can eat different types of food, different types of exercise, and what productivity and what kind of movement you need to focus on at certain stages of the month. The book that I'm gonna be referencing in this video is called Period Power by Maisie Hill. I really recommend you read that, but if you aren't arse reading, I'm gonna basically shorten. I'm gonna just splay out all that information that I learned from that book in this video as well as a bit of research that I did on my own accord in terms of food, exercise, movement and productivity and how we can work differently during each stage of our cycle. Knowledge is power. If I knew any of this information while I was in school it just would have made things a lot easier for me. I've been more accepting of my body rather than torturing myself and being angry at myself because I didn't know why I was feeling a certain way. Why am I always so tired? Why am I always so cranky? But the reasoning for that is because our dominant hormones are estrogen and progesterone which can make us sleepy, it can affect our appetite tight our mood which aren't dominant hormones that are in men now men have all we both have all hormones men and female but it's just um, certain hormones are more dominant in each sex so men's obviously dominant hormone is t testosterone females do have tes testosterone but it's only dominant at certain stages of the month and affects us in different ways so that's why we act primarily we both act differently culturally back in the day when we lived in a matriarchy when women were on their period they were just like sent out to sea to heal themselves were allowed to bathe and get massages just rest basically for that week for like five to seven days whereas now our lives are continuing as normal when actually we sh biologically we should be taking that time to rest but we're forced out of it if you try to think about it estrogen is the good hormone kind of like gives us the good feelings and progesterone is the bad feeling so the first half is dominated by so if you think of after your period the first half is estrogen and the second half is progesterone and this is also that we can prepare ourselves for having fucking having a fetus estrogen and progesterone affect your mood mood, behavior, and regulates energy, sleep, libido, and appetite. The production of these hormones are very sensitive to changes in your life. So work stress, poor diet, relationship is issues, and illness. Obviously, I won't be touching on endometriosis or PCOS because those are two, they're very specific issues that affect your hormone cycle. This is for just run-of-the-mill normal menstrual cycles that people might have. Our cycles can be a bit irregular. Mine was very irregular because I was breastfeeding and I'd just given birth so I kind of only have a regular period. Well I had a regular period but I was getting just like scant blood and it was like it was dominated by progesterone so I was just in a bad mood basically for six months and then once I got my proper period now I'm fe feeling like I'm properly experiencing my normal menstrual cycle but that was getting affected a lot by stress so as women it is like the most radical act of self-care to look after yourself so that your menstrual cycle can regulate itself and that you can treat yourself accordingly depending on how you're feeling. And this is a good way to take charge of your mental and your physical health. This is like the best thing that you can do for yourself. I'm gonna start off with the menstrual phase. For my skincare, I got a PR package. Well, I didn't get a PR package. Nourish, the, the health food shop sent me a Mother's Day present. They usually just sent me chocolate. I didn't know they were gonna send me skincare. So this was like a nice surprise. Dr. Hushka, a lot of chemicals that are in our skincare and our makeup obviously i'm going to be using a lot of chemical heavy makeup products there they can be endocrine disruptors i could probably make a whole other video on that but it's it, honestly it's a bit confusing for me at the moment because you can't use like non-stick pans certain plastics that leach into our food from like say if you reheat food in a lunchbox the plastics go into that and that's an endocrine disruptor disruptor certain deodorants are endocrine disruptors and that can all affect our menstrual cycle and the hormone releasing it can make it have irregular periods or make our periods stop altogether i might do a separate video video on that too but I, I do have to do some research because I'm not an expert. Now this I did enough research where I can talk about it. I do know that if you can limit the amount of chemicals that you're putting onto your skin, your skin is the biggest organ of your body so if you think of it in that way you are absorbing everything that you put onto your skin. Everything that's sold in like a health food shop so Nourish which was one of my favorite shops when I lived in town I'd be, I'd be going in there like getting my detergent and all. I know if you limit the amount of chemicals that you're putting on your skin it can help regulate your, your hormones. The facial toner I used that today. The Rose Day Cream 
they all just smell like a spa so I feel like that's how you know that it's good and then I use the daily hydrating eye cream I needed on an eye cream anyway so these are good that I had and I always run out of uh, mist toner so I had a Dr. Bronner's lip balm that I love it was the baby miles Dr. Bronner's lip balm they also sent me a PR package because I love Dr. Bronner so I was just like absolutely I'll fucking take it I didn't even know Nourish had their own brand but I yeah my dog sorry ate my Dr. Bronner's lip lip balm so I needed a new one. So during your menstrual phase this is when your hormones drop to their lowest level. After a woman gives birth this is like the biggest hormone drop that you can ever experience so like a hitting depression within those few hours of you giving birth like after your baby comes out it's the biggest hormone drop but the closest thing to compare to is having your period which isn't as extreme or intense but any woman who's given birth knows what the fuck I'm talking about and that's why there's like a huge flood of emotion and the oxytocin is released so that we we biologically want to look after our babies that's why that happens because of those horm the hormone levels have dropped off you're feeling tired anxious sleepy emotional I get PM well we all get PMS but I'll go into that as well the week before our period but this is a kind of like when it's heightened but we all sort of start, start to feel these things before our period actually happens but what I didn't know is that when you're having your period and this also happens when you're giving birth your body naturally starts to release release oxytocin which is the love hormone and it's increased from say cuddling hugging, kissing. I'm also reading a neuroscience book called The Female Brain, so I know sort of a little bit more about oxytocin and um, endorphins that are released during your period and puberty and, and birth, which I really recommend reading that book as well. It's really good. I know from when I was doing research about hypnobirthing and trying to give birth unmedicated, they do recommend like hugging your partner, your partner giving you a massage and making sure that you're in a loving, safe environment when you are giving birth. Mine was a bit more stressful and I feel like what your pain heightens when you're not releasing the oxytocin and say if you're in an unfamiliar environment, you're feeling scared of the pain, this th inhibits the release of oxytocin. So then the pain actually gets worse. So if, say if you have your period and you're going into work or you're doing really heavy exercise, you're going running, you're in fight or flight then, you're not allowing for the oxytocin to release. But if you're on your period, and say you take a rest day, you're having cuddles with your partner, you know, walking your dog, actually it releases oxytocin when you're like cuddling a pet as well, so you don't necessarily need a partner. Or if you're like cuddling your sister or your child, this is all the love hormone the endorphins and dopamine can be hit by eating chocolate and that's why we're told to eat chocolate or why we crave chocolate or sugary treats while we're on, on our period because the hormones lowered makes us crave those do that dopamine hit and it can actually re release oxytocin which helps with the pain so oxytocin a pain reliever and can also make us feel a little bit like woozy or elated or high when we're on our period so I know from my first three days I do feel a bit like dazed and confused it kind of feels like you're somnambulant like you've just woken up your your day like you're daydreaming or you're sleepwalking i'm using the milani conceal and perfect foundation me and Emma are doing a shoot for our podcast show that we're doing in london and that will be announced today we need a photo for the event page so that's why i'm putting makeup on but i i do feel like putting makeup on every day has helped me be more productive and it's it's like a signifier this is when my day has started my start my day has started now so i just have my real techniques beauty blender i want to try one of those uh, marshmallow things you're supposed to replace these every three months anyway because they harbor bacteria i used to now, when I was younger, before I had a job, you know, when you're like that awkward age of 16, 17, where you want to be making your own money, but it's, it's you can't get a job because you're still in school. Experimenting with makeup, you want you want fake tan, and you probably are legally underage drinking, so you want to be making money. I used to just clean this in hot water and fairy liquid instead of buying a new one. And I used coconut oil for absolutely everything. I used coconut oil for hair mask, for removing my makeup, for body lotion, for face moisturizer, deodorant. I would use coconut oil for literally everything because you could get it at, at a, you know, in the food shop. Apparently it's really good for like nappy rash and moisturizing your baby as well when they're a newborn. It's like the most simple oil that you can use. So they recommend using it on your babies and you know it's good if you can use it on your fucking baby. During your menstrual phase, it's a time for intimate, introspective, and private time. You'll usually have deep insights and profound revelations. So it's a good time, you say, to go for long walks, meditate, think about your life and your future, or maybe plan the rest of the month or what you want to do with yourself. It's not really a time for like hard work, concentration, focus. So what was the analogy I wanted to use? Your thesis. Say you're writing a thesis. During your menstrual phase is a good time to think of ideas of what you want to write about. Not necessarily start the research or start writing it or to contact your, what do you call them? 
your tutors, but just think of the ideas on your own. It says to take a break from exercise, social media, and work obligations as much as possible. Obviously, realistically, you can't really be taking time off work every month. But if you could, say if you're self-employed or if you had the option to work from home, this could be a good time to work from home. You know, your comfy clothes all day. There was also a bit on how to relieve pain, using heat, so having a hot water bottle on your belly, gentle exercise, abdominal massage and masturbation can all help with pain because masturbation obviously releases oxytocin when you orgasm so that's what helps with the pain. I do sometimes like having sex in my period. I know it's each to their own. Some people find it disgusting. No, I wouldn't on, you know, first or second day. It's literally like a fucking massacre. Bloody massacre in the bed. Afterwards, it can be really nice if you go gentle and slow. I find it really relaxing. It's a nice intimate experience as well. Now I have heard stuff from witches about, what's it called again? Is it called a blood bond? If you have sex in your period and it's a full moon, it does some sort of spell on your partner where they're at, like a there's a, an attachment so maybe be careful if there's a full moon and then after three days your hormones start to climb you're more energized and motivated so it's only really three day or three days even if you are still bleeding your hormones are going back to normal then I have a little guide I'll write this on the screen so you can screenshot it so for work try planning brainstorming reflecting analyzing journaling and creating for movements it's a good time to ask Ask your partner to give you a massage or give yourself an Indian head massage. There's, you can look it up on YouTube. Going on long walks, I'm a huge advocate. If there's one, two things, no, two things I'm a huge advocate for, just in general, is breast milk. The only time I ever comment on TikTok things is when people, someone has an issue and I know that breast milk can cure it, I will comment saying breast milk can cure this. There was a TikToker whose son had conjunctivitis and I was like, you need to lactate and squirt breast milk into their eye because it helps heal conjunctivitis. I'm not even a breastfeeding advocate. It's more so the breast milk. Like if you can somehow just keep lactating even if you don't want to breastfeed, it is such a a big, it's a gold mine. I don't know, like, I don't know how we haven't started, how capitalism hasn't like caught on to this or how we haven't tried started monetizing on breast milk yet. And what was the other thing? It, walks. Walking and breast milk are like my favorite things in the world after my daughter. Yoga, swimming, I had down. Swimming is like the best exercise you can do when you're pregnant as well because it's the least, it's just like the gentlest form of exercise on your body, especially if you're like carrying around a fucking bowling ball. Meditation, rest and napping. And then for food, I was gonna make meal plans, but honestly, thinking of meals to make is the bane of my existence. My brain doesn't work in that way. I cannot do it. I wish someone could re send me a recipe book of like, this is every single food that you love, and here's a recipe book of how to include them in all these different types of meals, because I'm so bad at thinking of what to make. With the baby led weaning, it's kind of a, it forced me to have, say like a fruit, a protein, and carbohydrate for breakfast, but even still, I don't know how to create like a meal out of it. I'm just like, okay, toast, eggs, and oranges. That's like kind of how my brain works. I'm like, okay, the separate food but I wouldn't know how to put it all together. Food, drinking more water. You're gonna be, obviously you're gonna be losing blood. You need to drink more water. Dark chocolate, grass-fed meats, salmon, kidney beans, blueberries, avocado, sesame and sunflower seeds. If you are interested in seed cycling, I know that's a big thing as well. If you include sesame and sunflower seeds. So sesame, say, if you have a stir fry get good at the meals. Sunflower seeds, you can have that on your porridge. So that's easy. Or if you have the, you know, the granola bars that has sunflower seeds, that would be the way that I would think of eating things. And then warm and easily digested foods, nutrient dense, more protein and healthy fats. So think soups and stews. That's what I found from my research. Drinking lots of tea and chamomile can help. Chamomile can help your teething baby if you're breastfeeding and you drink chamomile. It relieves the pain. So that must help in some form with menstrual pain. I'd love to get my eyebrows laminated. I used to do it last two summers ago and then my lamination woman got pregnant love for her and then I think she moved to Sligo so I was too emotionally attached to her and you know the way you have to get a patch test and stuff like that to me is just too much effort like going in just to get a patch test and then having to wait 24 hours and I have to go back in especially because I'm a suburban suburban queen now it's just too far away and I don't know if anywhere near me does it I'm using the NYX Pick It Stick It eyebrow gel and your menstrual phase is your period but you should always it's also compared to in the period power book it's compared to each season so that your menstrual phase you should see as winter the next phase then is a follicular phase and this is after your period and it's compared to spring which I love and I feel like I say that about every season except winter but I feel like that is my favorite season but I do love all the seasons except winter so your energies are increasing and your mood is boosted you're feeling light energetic and playful it's a good time to try something new so new outfits or new new routines or so like a new exercise routine new foods and then habits you start now are more likely to stick so say if you're writing your thesis and you 
you've no you've thought of your idea in the in your the menstrual period the winter phase of your life now is a good time to start it and set yourself a routine so say like I'm gonna do two hours every morning if you start that habit now you're more likely to stick to it for the rest of the season so then the estradiol clears up your skin and your cervical and vaginal juices are flowing love if spring doesn't deliver you're either overworked during your period or you have an iron deficiency if you're not feeling light and playful after your period it's a good time to like obviously consult with your doctor get blood tests done to see if you have a deficiency in anything or look at how you're treating your body during your period maybe you have to, you have to eat more or you have to take iron supplements or you have to go easy on the exercise so it can be due to over exercising dieting or getting older and this is my little guide that i have sorry one sec i'm just gonna do some do i want to do some blush every time i put concealer on i just look 10 times worse it cakes it looks like i mean i've gotten i've gotten expensive concealers i've gotten the concealers that everyone's recommending i've gotten different types of drug drugstore concealers they just all cake and look shit and just start like melting off my face they just look terrible even though i know i have bags from not sleeping because the baby but there's nothing really I can do about it. And I don't, I actually don't mind the look of bags really. It just makes me look a bit older, but sure, fuck it. Now in my last video, I used this e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I don't know if I like it. I think it made my makeup go weird by the end of the day. It could have been though that I wasn't moisturized enough. So my, my face makeup was kind of coming, you know what it like starts to separate at your nose and it, it looked blotchy on my cheeks and forehead. I, but that was after a good few hours. So I don't know if I just didn't apply it properly, but I will try it again. But today I didn't use it because I just feel like my, my face actually looks better without it especially if you're well moisturized like you shouldn't re i was hashtag influenced by this from tiktok i don't think you actually need primer i don't i don't think primer is nece a necessity really if you're well moisturized i do fucking contour my lips i have to keep reassuring myself that anytime i compare myself in terms of my looks to people especially now because i've had a baby obviously my body looks different and i there's more signs of aging on my face i suppose because it decreases in collagen from the lack of sleep and all these other things are affecting the production of collagen in my body obviously there's going to be more signs of aging but if i'm online or using my phone or on social media i then start to compare myself and start to think there's something wrong with it because everyone looks so young and so beautiful so then the more i'm on my phone the more i'm like oh my god maybe i should be getting botox or maybe i should be using fucking 10 different serums to try and inhibit the aging there's actually nothing wrong with you know my face i'm just i'm literally just lived in my body has been lived in and i'm you know i have the lines here from smiling my forehead has wrinkles from being expressive and there's nothing wrong with that but i did now in my early 20 20s i used to have a video about it i you i used to get lip filler i got it probably around five times and you can still sign kind of see you can still kind of see the signs of it still there one side of my lip is bigger than the other so then after that i was like i'm not getting lip filler again even though i am tempted the odd time i'm like oh, i would love a bit you know just half a mil because my pregnancy lips were fucking huge like my mom literally thought i was getting my lips done while i was pregnant but it's just the i don't know it makes pregnancy makes your face swell so it just like went all to my lips and then after i gave birth my lips went and then i kind of got withdrawals from it because i missed having the big juicy lips i'm learning more and more to accept my face and love who i am and it's much easier the less you're on your phone obviously and the less you're comparing yourself it gave me comfort knowing that everyone I compare myself to online probably has work done or is probably using a filter and it's not real they know their best angles they know good lighting so it's actually not you know it's not real it's not real my coffee's literally cold from talking so much. Okay, the guide now for the follicular phase or spring. For work, it's a good time for learning. So this is research for your thesis. Starting a new project, this is starting your thesis. Creativity, brainstorming, concentrating, research, project planning. So this is all for research for your thesis. A good time is after your period. And then for movements, running. Good time for to get your steps in. <coughs> dancing cycling hit and str strength tra strength training and then for food think green so broccoli leafy greens carrots peas you're trying to nourish your body after losing all that blood avocado oranges green lentils i think avocado was included in every stage of the month it's just like a superfood for our body it's unfortunate how it's harvested but green lentils brazil nuts I've also seen that Brazil nuts is like a superfood. If you have one Brazil nut a day, it's the same as taking a multivitamin. Uh, if any nutritionists are watching this, let me know. And then cashews, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, again with the seed cycling, chicken, eggs, probiotics, so kombucha, kimchi, fermented food, light and vibrant foods. The more color, the better. Steamed and sauteed veggies. For love, it's a good time to try new things in bed switching it up a bit going on a creative date so i wrote down you can go pottery making or you know paint each other and cooking together the best phase is the ovulation phase here we go i just need to pause to get some water 
I literally look like a greasy pervert every time I every time my hair is wet. Postpartum hair growth update, if anyone is interested, all my baby hairs are growing back now. And I do recommend getting, well, I I got a kit from Trua Hair, which is like a hair loss salon. And because I was breastfeeding, there was only a certain amount of products that I can use. The towel I had in my head earlier is a microfiber towel. Um, it's just the ge most gentle, softest thing that you can use in your hair because your hair is the most vulnerable or at its yeah, most vulnerable stage after you've washed it, especially if you use hot water. So all the fibers of your hair are open, so they're more susceptible to damage and breakage. So that's why you shouldn't be using like a normal rough towel on your hair. It's a bamboo hairbrush because that's also so again, it's the most gentle thing that you can use and it takes the oil from your scalp and drags, instead of absorbing all of it like a plastic brush would do, it takes the oil and it drags it down to the ends of your hair. So then that that oil that your, your head your, and your scalp naturally produces is the best possible thing that you can actually give your hair. So that's why it's really good to not wash your hair as often because those natural oils that are producing in your scalp encourage it to grow and uh, is the most healing for your specific needs because it's your body. The next phase then is the ovulation phase. This is gonna be like, this is your peak. This is when you're most productive, you're most happy, you're feeling your best, you're feeling your most confident, and you look your best as well. Now I know for the, the hormones that are released during ovulation, obviously just before ovulation, which is the follicular phase, you're getting those hormones that are clearing your skin and your vaginal juices are flowing. So that's why your you might get a bit hornier as well, because your body, if you think about it when you're ovulating, your body naturally wants you to make a baby. So this is before, during, and after ovulation. Ovulation only lasts one day, so that's why it lasts probably around a week. Estradiol, is at its peak, triggering luteinizing hormone and testosterone. So as I said before earlier in the video, women do have testosterone as well, but it only peaks at certain times of the month. So that's why we have like sort of male attributes. We could get a bit more competitive and more confident, a bit hornier. So this boosts your energy and your sex drive. You're oozing confidence and sex appeal. So I've heard now that apparently the hormones released can make your cheeks rosier and your skin more glowy. So during ovulation, you're physically actually getting more attractive to appease to the potential partners or potential mates if you want to have sex. It's so, everything is so primitive. If you think like animals in the wild, like it's the same as sort of peacocking or, and I've heard as well that you smell different. Get more attracted to like your natural body odor and want to have sex with you during ovulation because you're releasing those hormones that make you smell like sexier. Your need for food and sleep are reduced. So this is when you could do like a 5 a.m. morning routine. This is why the 5 a.m., you know, like the 5 a.m. club or whatever isn't suited to everyone and isn't suited to women because we don't work off a circadian rhythm. Like during your ovulation and I'd say your follicular phase is when you could probably do a 5 a.m., 6 a.m. morning routine. But in your menstrual phase and your luteal phase, not really. Like you should be allowing yourself to sleep in because that's what your body needs and that's how you're gonna actually work at your best. Not getting up earlier like it tells you in all the self-help bo self books that are written by men. You're more outgoing and horny love. Your cervical fluid becomes stretchy and slippery and is the consistency of egg white so you might get a bit of discharge. And I've also seen, no, I've seen this on TikTok so I don't know if it's true. You know like if you, in your underwear, at the bit where your vagina is, it, it can look like your underwear has been bleached. Something to do with the discharge can actually, it's like the pH level in your vagina can actually stain your clothes and can stain cotton to give like a bleached effect. You know the way your vagina, I'm doing a video on everything you Need to know about your vagina so there'll be more information on this but your vagina is self-cleaning so that's why we shouldn't be douching or like putting water up or to anything that affects the ph of your vagina because it has that naturally in it and that can affect it to the point where then it's it it gets rid of all those bacteria fighting hormones that are already naturally in our vagina but anyway the ph can stain your fucking underwear to the point where it like literally bleaches it. Okay, so this is a great time to schedule dates or rekindle romance with your partner. Say if you wanna try, get one of those apps like the sex apps or if you wanna try a 69, you know those dice that you throw and it's, it, it's like all those fun things that you want to do, role play and shit like that. It's all a good time to do that sort of thing. Living out your sexual fantasies. It's, it's a good time to go on dates, find out more about people because you're oozing confidence and you look your most attractive. It's a good time to do anything big, bold and public. So for your thesis, it's like meeting your thesis sponsor or your tutor to help you with that because you're going to be pitching ideas and it'll be the best time to do that. If you have to do a presentation or a meeting, it'll be a good time if you track your cycle, it'll be a good time to book in for those things. Or say if you're doing a job interview, it'll be a really good 
good time to start, say if you're applying for jobs in your follicular phase and then you time it perfectly so that you get the interview during your ovulation phase, that would be, you'd be more likely to get the job because you're oozing confidence and your brain is working at its highest capacity. You look attractive as well. Your menstrual cycle is sensitive to stress, shock and illness and if you're overworked then you won't ovulate. So this can affect your ovulation phase. Um, again, consult with your doctor if you feel like you're not feeling any of these things. Also track your body temperature to see when you're ovulating. I know there are some apps that you can get. Um, Melanie Murphy was sponsored by one of them and I follow them on Instagram. Um, I'll include it in the description if I remember correctly. There's a service that you can do to track, it's, it's supposed to be a form of contraception but obviously it's not, a, no form of contraception is 100% effective, but this is something where they where they send you basically a thermometer so you track your temperature every single day so it will tell you when you're ovulating, so to avoid having sex. I just don't think that would work for me. I would just be like, it's grand, we can do pull out, but like then again, you know, I had a bit, I had a fucking baby, so, and I don't want to have another one anytime soon. Like, I really don't want to have Irish twins, which is why when I saw Rihanna had gotten pregnant again, your body isn't fully healed. They don't recommend having another baby for 18 months after you've given birth because your body isn't fully healed and it can actually affect the development of your fetus because they're not getting as much nutrients as, as they need because your body isn't working at its full capacity until 18 months after you've given birth, sometimes even up to two years. So that's why you shouldn't be having, but that's why Irish twins are not really good. It can end in like a lower birth rate or health difficulties with the second baby. So in case anyone that was hashtag influenced by the Rihanna thing, and I know that people have an urgency or tendency when they're like reaching if you're in like your late 30s and you're rushing to have more children because you want them to have siblings, it can actually be really bad for your body but can be really bad for your baby to have children close together. That's why I'm like more, I'm gonna be more vigilant with contraception and planning to have the least amount of complications as possible. You should be waiting 18 months plus postpartum to try again for a baby. It's a good time to meet important, important clients, holding a wedding speech and organize a protest. Obviously a lot of these things can be out of your control. Like you can't be like, actually, can you have your wedding during this week because I'm ovulating. But if you yourself are planning your own wedding, maybe just try have it when you're ovulating would be a good time. So for work, network, pitch ideas, meetings, communication, productivity, and teamwork. A movement, uh, high impact. So spin class, good time to, me and Jason did a spin class. Oh my God. It was so embarrassing. Obviously Jason, I've mentioned it before. Jason used to be a PT. So he's like a bit more fit than me. It was so embarrassing doing the spin class. I was like heaving during it and I didn't know how to work the machine and I came in a bit late so I was a bit flustered. Oh, it was so embarrassing but I would, I felt great afterwards. I'd love to do it again. And also a good time to do, to go to a group fitness class. If you have class pass and things like that, it's, it's a good time to like plan what type of fitness that you're going to go to in certain weeks. See during your menstrual phase, maybe you can book in a yoga class and then for your follicular phase, you can do a HIIT workout and then for your ov ovulatory phase, you can go to a spin class. It's also a good time to do Pilates, bar, running, kickboxing and boot camps. And then for food, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, red bell pepper, spinach, red lentils, quinoa, berries, raw food, think salad, juices and smoothies. And then for love, having quality time, going to parties, going to a sex party if you're into that sort of thing. You'd be surprised, sex parties are so common in London. I was like shocked when, I didn't think they were actually things other than in movies, but any party that I went to in London and I go home relatively early, after I left, they, they were all like, yeah, we had an orgy after. But it could have been just the, maybe the friend group that I was in, but it was two different two different groups where this happened, where they were like, we had we all had sex with each other after you, after you went home. Or maybe they just didn't want me involved. Having orgasmic sex or going on first dates. I never have the video when you can see the finished look. Like, I'm gonna have to leave these in for a few hours so you're not actually gonna see what I look like. I just look a fucking... This is the last phase then, the luteal phase. So this is before your period and this is autumn. The ovulation phase was summer, obviously. The best phase. So you're starting to feel sad, cranky and tired. So this is your PMS. I get PMS so bad to the point where I'm like, oh, I want to off myself. Like none of this is worth it. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, so your hormones fall rapidly. You're struggling with your mood and your energy. There are 150 symptoms to PMS, including headaches, bloating, constipation, teariness and anxiety. Your inner critic is the loudest at this point of the month. So that's when you're like, I'm a piece of shit, I'm going nowhere. And that's why you shouldn't really be doing, say doing job interviews because you shouldn't be putting yourself in those positions where you're, if you face rejection, you're gonna feel even worse about yourself. And with if you go into that mindset anyway, you're probably not gonna perform at your best because your inner critic shapes then your behavior. 
subconscious doesn't know but the difference between what's true and or false. It's time to go with your gut, clean up your life and cut your losses. I don't exactly know what that means, but that's what I said in the book. I try to limit stress in your life, include more self-care. So self-care isn't really like giving yourself a bath and doing a face, face mask. This is like doing your inner work, doing journaling, do stuff that you know is not gonna give you maybe instant gratification, but delayed gratification. So for example, not scrolling on your phone, that is, if you're not scrolling on your phone, that is self-care. Like that is self-care and it, the opposite is self-harm. You're self-harming if you know you're doing something that's not gonna make you feel good in the long run, even though it, it might give you an, a dopamine instantly, but in the long run, that's not gonna make you feel good. Reading a book, for example, gives delayed gratification. Going on a long walk, long walk. Giving yourself nourishing food. I know it's so easy when you're PMSing to be like, give me a McDonald's burger immediately. But if you have healthy food, you know it's gonna nourish your body. It might reduce the symptoms of PMS and in the long run, you're gonna feel better. Allowing yourself to sleep in, that's a good self-care. Going to bed early, this is what self-care means. It's not fucking buying yourself a candle. You have limited energy for working, exercises, and socializing, so get important tasks done first. If you do need to get shit done, make sure you're doing them first because it's just gonna get longer the closer you get to your period, it's gonna be harder to get things done. If you have extreme PMS, heavy or irregular cycles, you might have low, low pro progesterone, which is caused by stress, nutritional deficiencies, and hypothyroidism. So again, consult your doctors if you're suffering with any of these. So for work, it's a good time to finish projects, do admin, so that's like, you know, uh, answering emails, uh, doing your taxes, planning your meals for the week, clearing out storage on your phone. Organize, so you're not gonna get overstimulated. Make sure that you have your room nice and tidy or and clean for when your period comes so that you're not stressed in your environment by the time you are menstruating. Doing deep inner work, pitching ideas, but also to focus on rest and reflection. For movements, still a good time for some dancing, maybe if you're going to adult ballet classes. Spending more time in nature, sea swimming, because that's good for your circulation. Get the blood flowing. It's also good for your mood to, you know, hit the cold water. Cold water exposure is really good for your mood. Doing outdoor yoga, Pilates, hip circles, bar, fitness, and make sure that you're being gentler as time goes closer to your period. Going on long walks and hikes. So good time to plan a hike if it's sunny out. And then for food, focus on iron rich foods, zinc, carbs, healthy fats, leafy greens, B6 vitamins, magnesium. I think it's good to take magnesium during your whole month. I think people are just all deficient in magnesium. I take it and it's so good for my digestion, my sleep, my anxiety. I love magnesium. It's my favorite supplement that I take and it's really hard to find in foods. So that's why people usually do need to supplement with magnesium. For everything else, I would say it's better to get your nutrients from your food because you digest it better. Eating cauliflower, make it, you can make some cauliflower wings. Celery, cucumber, onion, squash, apples, dates, pears, chickpeas. So you could have toast, I love this. Toast with red pepper hummus and slices of cucumber. So that's chick chickpeas and your cucumber and carbs. Dates, pears, chickpeas, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds, again with the seed cycling, so this is back to your sunflower and sesame seeds. Tahini, there's tahini in, in uh, hummus. Eating walnuts, beef, turkey, fish. Focus on batch cooking, baking and roasting. And then for love, it's a good time to evaluate issues, so to communicate with your partner if you're thinking of anything, because you'll be more in tune with like your emotions and your feelings. Having a date night in, so cooking, again, cooking together or doing those couples questions to deepen your intimacy, your bond together. Having slow sex with more foreplay. And then there was a little note at the end and I just wanted to include it because sleep is so important. But bad sleep can mess with your blood sugar and raise levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which suppresses the production of estrogen and progesterone. So getting your good sleep in, going to bed earlier and allowing yourself to sleep in if you're missing that 6 a.m. fucking Pilates class during your menstrual period, like that's what you should be doing. That is a form of self-care. Don't get sucked into this idea that you need to be getting up at 5 a.m. every single day and going to a Pilates class and drinking a green smoothie because only certain certain specific times of the month that that is good for you, but you should be doing other things depending on where you are in your cycle. So hopefully this was video was helpful. I can't wait to implement all of these things into my life. I do need to get a period tracker because my ADHD doesn't allow me to actually remember. I'm really bad with dates and times and where I am unless I write it down but I need to have it in one place, maybe an app that's going to tell me what uh, time of the month I'm at. If there's any other topic, topic you want me to, uh, I can glean information for another topic and read loads of books so that you don't have to and make a video about it so it's more digestible information. I find this fun so if there's anything else you want me to research I can do that for you, no problemo. Love you so much.